In archaeology, space archaeology is the research-based study of various human-made items found in space, their interpretation as clues to the adventures mankind has experienced in space, and their preservation as cultural heritage. It includes launch complexes on Earth, orbital debris, satellites, and objects and structures on other celestial bodies such as Mars. It also includes the applied field of cultural resource which evaluates the significance of space sites and objects in terms of national and international preservation laws. Cultural resource looks at what, how and why these artifacts of our recent history should be preserved for future generations. Cultural heritage Space tourism could affect archaeological artifacts, for example, on the Moon. The notion that cultural heritage is at stake and requires action to prevent deterioration or destruction is gaining ground. Perhaps artifacts say, antiquated space stations could be preserved in museum orbit. Many such artifacts have been lost because they were not recognized and assessed. Experts assert that continuity and connection to the past are vital elements of survival in the modern world. A model has been suggested for international cooperation based upon Antarctica. Implications for cooperation interest anthropologists as well. An unexpected ramification of this work is the development of techniques for detecting signs of life or technology on other planets, or extraterrestrial visitation on Earth. One facet of this work is the use of satellites for identifying structures of archaeological significance. Satellites Satellites are key artifacts in examining human encounters with space over time and the effect we leave through artificial objects. This list includes Vanguard 1 launched in 1958, the man-made satellite Vanguard 1 and the upper stage of its launch rocket are the oldest still in orbit. Vanguard 1 lost communication in 1964 but had a few different functions, including the obtention of geodetic measurements and the testing of capabilities. Asterix 1 with the intention of testing the French Diamond rocket, Asterix 1 was the first French satellite launched into space. Asterix 1 had a very short-lived transmission period of two days but remains in orbit and is expected to for centuries. Skynet 1A, providing communication to Middle Eastern forces, Skynet 1A was launched over the Indian Ocean in 1969. No longer in operation, Skynet 1A has an approximate lifetime of more than one million year. Cosmos 2222 with the intended function of identifying ballistic missiles launches, Cosmos 2222 was launched in 1992. With an operation life of four years, Cosmos and its rocket body remain in orbit today. Satellites are just one example of several human traces we leave behind in, and out of this world. <laughs> <laughs> Legal matters The complexities and ambiguities of international legal structures to deal with these sites as cultural resources leave them vulnerable to impacts in the near future by many varieties of space travel. An outline of the legal situation was made by Harrison Schmidt and Neil Armstrong, both of them astronauts who walked on the Moon as part of the Apollo program. The governing law on the Moon and other celestial bodies is the Outer Space Treaty of 1967 based upon guidelines from experience in the Antarctic. Another source of ideas is the law of the sea. The Outer Space Treaty contains language stating that space objects remain under the jurisdiction of the originating state, and the civil and criminal laws of that state govern private parties both on the moon and events leading up to such activity. State parties are to inform the public about the nature and result of their activities. The later Moon Agreement of 1979 was signed but not ratified by many spacefaring nations. Schmidt and Armstrong believe this lack of ratification relates to disagreement over wording such as, "...the Moon and its natural resources are the common heritage of mankind," which is taken as possibly excluding private activity, and objections to wording concerning the disruption of the existing environment. A non-profit organization called for All Moonkind, Inc. is working to establish legal protections for archaeological sites in outer space. The entirely volunteer group includes space lawyers and policymakers from around the world. 
As a result of their efforts, the United Nations Committee on the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space agreed, in January 2018, to consider the creation of a Universal Space Heritage Sites Program. Having created a discussion around preservation in outer space, for all moonkind is now focused on preparing drafts of implementing regulations and protocols. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Background and history. During a graduate seminar at New Mexico State University in 1999, Ralph Gibson asked, "Does federal preservation law apply on the moon?" That question led to Gibson's thesis, "...lunar archaeology, the application of federal historic preservation law to the site where humans first set foot upon the moon," to a grant from the New Mexico Space Grant Consortium, and to creation of the Lunar Legacy Project, a manuscript by scientists at NASA and ESA in 2004 raised the possibility of preserving Apollo landing sites for future astroarchaeologists. In 2006, Dr. O'Leary with New Mexico State Historic Preservation Officer Catherine Slick and the New Mexico Museum of Space History NMMSH, documented the Apollo 11 Tranquility Base archaeological site on the Moon. Some legal aspects of this work already have surfaced, though its mission isn't primarily archaeological. The Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter has imaged all of the Apollo landing sites as well as rediscovering the location of the first Lunokhod 1 rover, lost since 1971. Note, all of the U.S. flags left on the Moon during the Apollo missions were found to still be standing, with the exception of the one left during the Apollo 11 mission, which was blown over during that mission's lift off from the lunar surface and returned to the Mission Command Module in lunar orbit. Orbit. The degree to which these flags are preserved and intact remains unknown. Based on an idea by British amateur astronomer Nick House, a team of experts has been assembled to try to locate the lunar module of the Apollo 10 mission nicknamed Snoopy, which was released during the mission and is currently thought to be in a heliocentric orbit. The Snoopy mission is encouraged by the 2002 re sighting of the Apollo 12 third stage rocket. Topic. See also Topic. References and notes Topic. Further reading Darren, Anne, O'Leary, Beth, eds. 2009. The Handbook of Space Engineering, Archaeology and Heritage. CRC Press, Taylor & Francis. ISBN 1-4200-8431-3. Permanent Dead Link Terms of Reference for the Space Heritage Task Force written by Alice Gorman and John B. Campbell 2003. Beth L. O'Leary, et al., Archaeology and Heritage of the Human Movement into Space. Springer, Chom 2015, ISBN 978 3 319 07865 6. External links Permanent Dead Link Preserve Record of Human Space Exploration, Austin Craig, NMSU News Release, 2008. Johns Hopkins Newsletter from Space Junk to World Heritage Listing Sue Lowe for the Sydney Morning Herald 2003. The Moon, an archaeological treasure trove Leonard David at the Coalition for Space Exploration Lunar Legacy Project Space Archaeology Wiki An excellent source of links to papers and people Space Archaeology Cleaning up space junk may erase history Judy Skatsoon for ABC Science Online 2006. Moon Agreement Various legal documents online at Lunar Land Management System International Institute of Space Law Permanent Dead Link – Testimony of the World Archaeological Congress in 2005 about the National Historic Preservation Act Puff Video on Space Tourism Jeff Bezos West Texas Rocket Facility Blue Origin NASA Planet Hunter to search out other Earths Space Junk, an archaeological odyssey featuring an interview with Dr. Alice Gorman, a.k.a. Dr. Space Junk. 3 4